This next gentleman, he is a New York comedian. He's performed all over America. New York comics, so let's give a big LA, actually scratch that. Let's be warm, loving, and supportive to our next comedian. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? Good to be here. It's my first trip out to California to perform, so thank you for having me. Wonderful people. Love you. I'm a little bit pissed off, though, because that bitch did not notice my eyebrows. <laughs> right? Right? And I am that metrosexual guy. So, you know, whatever. Fuck it. You know what? Let me move this mic stand, because it makes me look a little fat. <laughs> What are you laughing at? It's not that funny, you know? Oh okay, God, I don't even be beautiful, so I'm just gonna laugh at the fat guy. <laughs> Bitch. No, you are very funny. I'm not beautiful. You know I'm Italian. You like Italian guys? Anyway, so you can notice I have a little bit of a weight problem, right? I don't give a fuck though, because everybody's got their problems, right? I'm fat, but look at my face, it's gorgeous. <laughs> Look at this guy over here. Whoa. I'm not sure I'd be fat. Anyway. <laughs> no, but I do have two beautiful children that God gave me. So I am trying. I'm working on it. I'm trying to get in shape. I want to see them live, grow up, and have children. Matter of fact, I just had a triple bypass. So come on, give it up. Triple bypass. That's not fucking. Yeah, I bypassed the Burger King. I bypassed the McDonald's. I bypassed the Wendy's. I didn't bypass the Dunkin' Donuts on no fucking way. You ever see the cream in those? Oh, it's like the closest thing in the pussy I'm ever gonna get again. I don't give a shit either though. I'm too fucking tired to work for for sex. Just give me a dozen donuts. They're like 12 orgasms in a box. I only have to leave my chair. <laughs> Honey, can you get me a sham wow, please? So just. That's gross. Do you like donuts? Have a nice cream donut when you get home. Think of me. <laughs> Your friend Mike from New York. No, you know, it's true. I just came across the country. Oh, my God. Everybody should drive across the country once. And I mean only fucking once. I mean, it, went, it was all downhill after Chicago. I did a show in Chicago. I'm like, this is fucking great. Then I hit fucking Iowa. And the bur 500 miles of fucking corn. <laughs> now, like, I am now afraid of corn. You show me corn, I will leave the room screaming. And then, you know, you stop like 2.30 in the morning of some gas station in Nebraska, and there's like 20 people in there trying to say, you know, there's 20 different varieties of corn. I'm like, yeah, really? You know, Frito Lay buys this corn. I'm like, you some corny motherfucker, shut the fuck up with the fucking corn. People are right, us people from New York are a little nasty. Only because we have other things to talk about besides fucking corn. I mean, it's literally, I'm trying to be nice. I'm like, I don't give a fine motherfuck about your fucking corn. And then, you know, I get to Denver. And I'm like, this isn't so bad. You know, you hear about the altitude. I'm like, oh, there should be signs all over Denver that say, listen here, you fat motherfucker. If you have not gotten off your couch in 14 years, do not drive any further west. Because that never ain't the high part. You gotta go up into those fucking mountains. I was passing out at the fucking wheel. I didn't know what the fuck to do. Skinny people I think can handle it. I'm, I had to call the police. Literally, like a fucking punk bitch with nice eyebrows that I am. I'm like, I'm on top of the mountain, I'm afraid. How do I get out of here? He's like, you pussy fuck you. Go go, go through your eyebrows and drive west, you'll be alright. But I am living dangerously in LA. I am. I actually got my haircut the other day and decided not to wax my eyebrows until the next haircut. Right? Hi. You have the same glasses as me, sir. You're a cool guy. I want to be friends with you. Do you share it all? I've been so fucking lonely. No, seriously. And it ain't easy being fat. I gotta give myself a fucking reach around just to jerk off. It's not funny. What are you laughing at? You too, right? I 
actually in New York had a funeral for my dick. <laughs> I did, I had a little wood box made, dearly beloved. Went over well. I actually have some girl in New York that likes me now. She, she saw a show out there. She fell in love instantly, God bless her. And she's on the phone with me today, I'm explaining it to her. I'm doing my best to do it, because I've been married three times. You know, I'm doing my best to save the girls from trouble. I'm like, do you understand that I only have an inch and a half dick? Do you understand? She's like, I don't care. I'm like, do you understand that inch and a half don't even get hard no more? So, at least I'm honest. Right? But you know, as we cross across the country, there's different things we can say in different places. Like, I'm in California now. You know, you guys are all liberal, God bless you, and everything, kumbaya, all peace and love. You know, and we all know what that bullshit's all about. You're just trying to hide how fucking nasty you drive on the freeways. And guess what? It's not working. We all know that you're motherfuckers on the freeways. Seriously, the whole country knows. But you know what? In New York, we did just get the gay marriage. So give it up for that. I'm happy about that. In New York, in, in California, rather, now they have to teach the gay history in schools. So my question is, are there any gays in here? In fact, what are you so pissed off about lately? Like, everything is going your way, right? And you guys are suing comedians in Canada. You got a fucking comedian drumming all over the American. You know, look at that poor dude, Tracy Morgan. And he's trying to suck dick all over the country to say he's sorry. <laughs> Just a joke. You're gay, motherfucker. You know gay means happy, right? I mean, what the fuck? But I say give them the gay the, the gays the marriage, because they can't fuck it up any worse than I did. <laughs> now I've been for three of them. So you know, fuck it. You know the grass is always greener though, gay people. Because one of the nice things about being gay, right, was that you could walk down the street and suck any cock you saw. Wasn't that like the great thing? Ooh, look at that cock. Hey. Now you're gonna be walking down the street with your little bitch wife. You know, look at the cock, the guy's your little bitch wife says. I saw you looking at that cock. No, no, honey, I wasn't looking at the cock. Ugh. You know, your life's over now. You don't even understand what you're doing to yourself. And you're going to get horny. You're going to go suck that cock. Yes. It's going to happen. And you're going to have to give that motherfucker half. Just like we got it. So enjoy it, queers. And, and you know something else, too? Go work fucking seven to ten years to take care of some little bitch. And you get home and all the shit's packed up. But honey, where are you going? Listen, I told you already, your ball bag is sagging and I can't live with it anymore. I met Scott, he's got very nice tight balls and I'm leaving you for him. Does that sound like fun? You're laughing very hard at the gay joke, sir. You got my glasses, you're laughing at the gay joke. I think you're a closet queer. That's already right, though. Anyway, I'm not good with time. I guess I got a couple minutes left. I just want to tell you guys a little bit about my mother. Any Italians out here? There's some Italian people, right? Are you low class Italian like me or are you higher class Italian? Like when you woke up in your morning in the morning, did your mother ever tell you to go fuck yourself? <laughs> then you're higher class Italian than me. Because my house it was like a good day and mom, my mom would say, Good morning, Mike. I'd be like, oh, good morning, mom. On a bad day, she'd be like, go fuck yourself. I'd be like, well, mommy. On a really bad day, she'd be like, go fuck your mother, you little son of a bitch. I'd be like, but mom. <laughs> but ever. She just taught me, you know, words don't really matter, it's what people do. But the truth of the matter is she was really smart. Like she had a way to cut through all the bullshit. Like I was a little wise ass when I was 16. You know? Like you know, most parents would tell you to wear clean underwear in case you're in a car accident, right? You ever hear that? I didn't give a shit. I was a wise ass. I'm like fuck it. If you hit a tree doing six, you're gonna shit your pants anyway. Right? The fuck's the difference? If you get in the hospital and they're cutting you, they got you in a fucking operating room to cut your pants off. What's the doctor going to do? See a little shake your pants off? Oh, everyone, nurses, everyone, look at those underwear. They're not clean. Fuck this guy. <laughs> Let him die right here. No, I knew it didn't be fun. So I didn't listen to that clean underwear shit, but my mom had a way. And I think any 16 year old boy would listen. So if you have a kid who's a little obstinate, you want to get him to work clean underwear, do what my mom did. She looked at me and she'd go, hey, jerk off. You better wear clean underwear in case you go out and somebody wants to suck your dick. Right? That made tremendous sense to me because I don't want to have my dick sucked. Right? She goes, Nobody's going to suck your dick if your balls stink, you stupid motherfucker. Anyway, God bless you. God bless Bobby for having me. You're a great audience. My name is Mike Boyle. That's my time. Thank you, everybody.